Good morning, everyone. We are the Group 3. I am Gabriel Denis Iralion, and I am proud to present to you my group mates. So we have Stephanie Grace Basa, Diwata Marie De Leon, Lorraine Bonita, Nico Diita, Gwen Batatas, Aubrey Maliari, Cinderella Faye Morales. So to start, let's define what is computer resources. Computer hardware is a collective term used to describe any of the physical components of an analog or digital computer. It also means that it's all the hardware, software, data, equipment, devices, and systems. The term hardware distinguishes the tangible aspects of computing device from software. While the software is the written machine, readable instructions, or programs that tell physical components what to do when to execute the instructions. Hardware and software goes hand in hand together. A computing device can only function efficiently if both the hardware and the software are working together. The computer resources can be divided into functions, the input, output, processing, and storage. This would be further explained by Stephanie Diwata Lorraine and Nico. Now, let us hear more about the first function of computer resources, which is the input. Stephanie, go ahead. Thank you, leader. So, I am Stephanie Grace Vibasa, and I will report about the first function, input. So, input device is a piece of instrument or hardware that allows users to provide data, information, or control instructions to a computer used for interaction and control. However, yung mga computer, hindi nila na-understand yung raw formats. So, therefore, input devices convert raw data into the appropriate format or language that can be easily understood by a computer. So, it works in a way na yung translated and yung converted data is nasa store sa primary memory and nasa send sa CPU pa, uh, for further processing. So, in simpler terms, an input device is a kind of peripheral device that helps communicate with processing units of the computer. So, may common example ng input device. Next. First, we have keyboard. It is one of the primary input devices which helps in entering data and commands in a computer. So, yung layout ng keyboard is identical sa typewriter. So, may additional piece nga lang siya for specific tasks. So, a normal keyboard usually has a variety of keys such as alphabetic character keys, number keys, arrow keys, and control keys. So, yung laptop naman natin is may inbuilt keyboard para um, yung laptop is mas maliit and mas magaan. Next naman, yung mga modern devices natin like smartphones or tablets, meron naman siyang mga touchscreen na keyboard for, uh, or virtual keyboard para makahelp sa pag-input ng data. Next, we have mouse. The most common and very popular pointing device that helps to interact with the computer through a process called point and click. So, yung mouse is ginagamit siya para ma-move yung cursor sa computer screen and ma-click yung corresponding object using its voice. Buttons. So, usually merong left, right, and middle uh, roller buttons. Next, we have touchpad or trackpad. It is an input device that is primarily inter integrated with the laptop. So, pointing device din siya, pero um, surface yung shape niya. <clears throat> So, yung surface naman na to is nadadetect yung movements, movements ng ating fingers para mag-move yung pointer accordingly. So, common alternative siya sa mouse. Next, we have scanner, an essential input device that allows us to convert the hard copy <clears throat> document into a digital file. So, it uses optical technology that reads characters or pictures from a paper and transfers them to a computer's drive for further manipulation. Next. Next, we have microphone or mic. 
It is a type of voice input device that allows users to input device at uh, the input voice into a computer system. So mics typically read sounds from the surroundings and convert analog sound waves into electrical signals. So yung signal naman na to is nakakonvert pa into digital form and nasa store sa computer. Next, we have digital camera, an input device that is used to capture images and video in digital form. So, as is na siya. Next. Next. Next, we have webcam, web camera or webcam. So, Another device that can capture images and videos and convert them into digital form, but can't work independently. So unlike sa digital camera, kailangan nilang makonect muna sa computer bago gumana. So and uh, so webcam have no inbuilt memory, kaya kailangan nila ma connect sa storage ng computer. Next, we have joystick. It is an input device that is used to play games on a computer. So, na help nila makontrol yung next. Next, we have light pen, another pointing device that has the same structure as a pen. So it is used to select on-screen items, draw pictures, and write independently in document. So we have other examples such as trackball, graphic tablet, stylus, magnetic ink reader, optical character reader, barcode reader, QR code reader, optical mark reader, biometric devices, and motion capturing devices. So that's it for my report. Next, we have Diwata for output devices. Diwata? Um, output devices are any peripheral that accepts the data from a computer and prints or projects or reproduces. It can be in a form of audio, video, or hard copy like a printed paper or etc. Next slide. So there are various output devices. They are as follows. First, the monitor. The monitor is often known as the visual display unit or VDU. So it displays the process data like text, um, images, videos, audios, etc. The sharpness of an image is determined by the number of pixels. So so higher so higher definition ibig sabihin ano mas mataas yung pixels okay so there are also two types of monitor viewing screen so first the cathode ray tube um it generates a beam of electrons that helps the electrons gone so they strike the inner surface of the screen to generate the images second is yung nauuso ngayon yung plasma monitor so yung electricity supply napupunta siya sa gas. So, um, kinoconvert nito yung plasma na nagpo-produce ng UV light. So, yun yung nagka-create ng image. Second is yung printer. Next slide. Okay. So, a printer creates a hard copy of the process data or information. So, um, they are divided into two categories. So, first, the impact printer. So, in impact printers, characters are printed on ribbon. So, smash siya sa paper. In second naman is non-impact printer. So, it prints characters without the use of ribbon. So, these printers often known as page printers because they print a full page at a time. So, third naman is yung plotter. Yung plot plotter is a device that prints high-quality graphics in a variety of color formats. So, Pinaprint nito yung mga large um large images, yung mga architectural drawings, large format printings, etc. 
So for um so usually yung platter naman for business purposes ganyan. Um fourth is the projector. So it is a device that allows users to project their output onto a large area such as screen or a wall. So any flat surface pwedeng mag pwedeng gamitan ng projector. So fifth is speakers. Speakers are connected to computers to allow sound to be the output. So they take the the audio input from the computer sound card and output sound waves as the audio output. So sixth, headphones. Um, they are computer output devices that are inserted into the computer through the USB. So headphones. Um, pwedeng wired, pwedeng wireless. So usually uso na Uso na nga kasi ngayon yung wireless. So, connected siya sa computers, laptops, mobile phones, etc. To hear to hear the sound without causing any inconvenience to others. So, seventh is the sound card. So, they are computer output devices that are inserted into our computer. It is either external or internal and required siya to produce sound on our computer. So, last... GPS, so Global Positioning System, it is a radio-based satellite navigation system that uses, that uses radio signals to pinpoint a specific position. So um, that's all. For, for the next topic, we have Lorraine Bonita. Thanks, Diwata. Moving on to processing, computer processing devices are all hardware that uses program instructions to first manipulate data para sa pagtransform nito from input to output information. Second, provide coordination of tasks with all units of a computer, meaning ito yung utak na nag-uutos kung ano at saang devices i-handle yung task. And three, Control other devices to perform a certain operation for a smoother synchronization of tasks and roles. So, let's go with the main types of processing devices. Next. So, yeah, first is the motherboard, also known as logic board in Apple computers. This is the backbone since it connects all other devices to the computer. As you can see in the pictures, maraming nakalagay sa motherboard like the AGP slot, IDE connector, CMOS backup battery, and so on. And they're all connected by the motherboard circuit 3. Next is the CPU or Central Processing Unit. This, uh, this is really the brain of the computer since it helps to promote all types of data processing operations. So, unang component ng CPU ay ang ALU or Arithmetic and Logic Unit. Ito yung nagpe-perform ng, sabi nga, arithmetic at logical operations like addition, subtraction, ganon. Andito yung tinatawag na mismong microprocessor, the heart of the computer. Pwede siyang single core or multi-core, meaning pwede two or more processors para ma-improve yung performance, mabawasan yung power consumption, at mas madaling simultaneous support sa computer tasks. Note na ang CPU is essentially a microprocessor, but not all microprocessors are CPUs. Ang control unit naman ang nagko-control ng operations at nag-uutos na magpagalaw ng data from one unit to another. Meaning, sinasabihan nito ang memory, ALU, input at output devices kung paano magresponde sa instructions na naibigay sa kanila. Next, the GPU or Graphics Processing Unit. This is another processing device that can also be considered a microprocessor since chip siya na tumutulong mag-render ng graphics at images by performing rapid mathematical calculations. Siguro familiar na kayo dito since isa ito sa PC requirement, di ba? Pag nagre-render ng 2D at 3D images, videos at animations. So may two variations din ang GPU. Pero onti lang naman yung pinagkaiba. Una ay ang video cards or iGPUs. Uh, sample ay yung Intel UHD graphics or Radeon Vega graphics. Ito yung mga integrated na talaga sa motherboards. Kaya nga iGPU for integrated GPU. Yun nga lang, mas mababa ang processing power nito kaysa graphics card. 
Then, merong graphics cards or DGPUs. Sila naman yung pwedeng ipasak sa board like NVIDIA GTX or Radeon RX. Kaya naman ito, DGPU, which stands for Discrete Graphics Unit, ay dahil may dedicated or hiwalay siya na memory na hindi siya share sa CPU. Next, processing device is the PSU or Power Supply Unit. Diba yung una nga, backbone, brain, heart? Ito naman I consider as the lungs of the computer because it converts the main AC to low voltage and regulated DC power para ma-distribute to all parts of the PC para mabuhay na rin yung mismong computer. Sa isang desktop computer, ito yung small box na may I.O. power switch. Yan. So lastly, the sound card. This enables the computer to save all types of sound binary code language. Ito rin ang nagde-decode ng code na yon para ma-play yung tunog. And that's it for processing. May I call on Nico Deita for the next section. All right, thanks Lorraine. So proceed naman tayo sa next part. And by the way, I am Nico and I'm going to report about storage. So storage, um, alternatively referred to a digital storage or storage media or the storage medium. And also, it is capable of holding information either temporarily or per permanently. So kumbaga, ito ay hardware which used for storing, um, porting, or the extracting data files and objects. So next slide, please. Ayan. So, of course, um, storage devices are one of the core components of computing device. So, basically, yung nakikita nyo dyan sa, um, sa screen ay mga example ng storage device like pen drive or di kaya flash drive, hard disk, um, CD, and then memory card. And later, malalaman natin yung mga ibang function ng mga example dyan. So, next slide, please. Ayan. So storage devices are available in different forms um depending on the type of underlying device. Um they are two different type of storage devices. Una as you can see po in the picture, meron pong internal and then temporary sa part ng primary kasi po ang primary storage uh, devices are designed to hold data temporarily and they are internal in the computer. And also note that they have the fastest data um access speed. Um, example of primary storage naman is RAM and then cache memory. So sa kabilang part naman ay second storage uh, um, devices kung saan siya naman ang permanent and external. So meaning to say po ang secondary devices stores data permanently and note exactly that they can either be internal or external to the computer. So these types of devices include hard disk, um, optical disk drive, and then USB storage device. Um, last one, kung mapapansin nyo sa picture, mas malaki po yung second storage sa primary storage kasi pinadya ko po yun because I like bigger things po. Just kidding aside, kung baga, ang last characteristics po ng primary storage uh, devices are generally in small size while secondary devices usually have a larger storage capacity. So anyway, uh, lagi nyo pong tatandaan yung tatlong characteristics for the primary or the sa secondary. Like kahit alin naman dun sa type na yun, kasi kabaliktaran lang naman ng isa kung paano natin din-describe yung isang type. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Ayan. So there are four types of devices in which computer data can be stored. So para mas mabilis natin matandaan, kunin na lang natin ang first letter na mga words per type of devices for computer data. So as you can see, my MOSO po tayo magbubuo. MOSO is the four types of devices. So first, M, magnetic storage devices. So most commonly used storage devices siya, um, affordable and easily accessible. So a large of amount of data can be stored in this through uh, magnetized mediums. So example ng magnetic eye floppy disk, hard drive, zip disk, and magnetic strip. So, yung nakikita nyo dyan sa picture, sa magnetic, is a isang floppy disk. So, it is a removable storage device, which is the shape um, of a square and comprises magnetic elements. Nga, guys, kanina. So, next naman is O. 
optical storage devices. So devices that uses lasers naman and lights to detect and store data. And they are cheaper in comparison sa USB drives and then can store, of course, more data. So example is CD-ROM, Blu-ray, this, um, DVD, and then CD-R. So sa picture naman dyan sa optical ay isang CD-R. So it is a readable compact disc uh, which uses photosensitive organic dye to record data and store it. So they are low cost, low cost um, replacement for storing software and applications. So next naman is solid state storage or di kaya flash memory devices. So these storage devices have now replaced both magnetic and optical devices natin. So of course, kung easy to use then easy to use din tong storage solid state natin. And then portable then and easily available and accessible. So of course, cheaper din siya and more convenient option to store data. And example nito ay USB drive, memory card, memory stick, and then SD card. So ayan, sa part naman ng solid state, yung picture na makikita nyo ay isang USB drive or di kaya kung tawagin natin ay pen drive. So ito ay comes in small size and portable and ranges between storage uh, space of 2 gigabytes to 1 terabyte. <clears throat> it also comprises an integrated circuit in which allows it to store data and also replace it. Ayun po yun sa pen drive. And then last na, uh, four types ay online, online cloud storage. To the term cloud, computing is used to describe the data um, centers available for users over the internet na kasi where they can save their database and of course files. And this data can easily be accessed over the internet anytime and anywhere kasi nga data is everywhere. And this has become a common a mode to store data. And this option is all, also available in mobile phones where a backup of our files and data is being managed. So that's it for the four types of devices in which computer data can be stored. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Ayan, so ito naman yung mga questions to answers for additional information lang about storage device. So one, bakit nga ba kailangan ang storage sa isang computer? So why is storage is needed in a computer? So alam naman natin na without a storage device, a computer cannot save or remember any settings of information and would be considered as a dump terminal. So ano nga ba yung dump terminal? So ang dump terminal is a terminal that does not perform local processing and entered information but serves as an input and output um, devices for an attached or network link processor. So ayun, going back to the question, although a computer can run with no storage devices, it can do naman ng information unless um, it is connected to another computer that had another storage ca capability. So, maski ngayon, um, such as browsing the internet request information na to be stored on your com computer, of course. Second, which storage devices used today? So, alam naman natin most computers today primarily use an SSD to store information and the ability to use flash drive or USB pen drive like that and access to cloud storage ay ginagamit na rin sa ngayon. So last na question is, what storage devices has the largest capacity? So for most um, computers, the largest storage device is the hard drive or SSD. So many storage devices have been available nga in many different capacities. So for example na lang yung evolution ng uh, hard drive, their storage capacity has increased from 5 megabytes to several terabytes in a size in a size. Yeah, so ayun lang yung tatlong um questions sana marami kayong natutunan and you learned something to myself and to my report and sa group mates ko. And I will now pass the floor to Gwen Batatas. Hi Gwen. Hello Nico, thank you so much for that introduction. So, moving on, we have the software. So, software um, tech target defines software as the set of instructions, data, or programs used to operate computers and execute specific tasks. So basically, the software tells the hardware what to do. So um, we can categorize this into two main types. 
which are the system software first. System software are pre-installed with the operating system since ayun nga, kailangan nga siya para mag-operate yung buong computer system. And system software was made with complex programming and can run independently. Common types of system software are the following. We have here the <clears throat> we have here the operating systems. The operating systems manages the computer's memory and processes, as well as all of its software and hardware. It also allows the user to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak the computer lang the computer's language. Kagaya nga na nabanggit kanina, may specific na language na naiintindihan ng computer and ang operating system ang responsible para i-translate ang actions ng user into the language na naiintindihan ng computer. Without an operating system, a computer is basically useless. Next, we have the device driver. So the device driver controls a specific hardware device attached to a computer. Device drivers are essential for a computer to work properly. So, ayun. Mamaya, madidiscuss pa siya. Lastly, for the system software, we have the firmware. The firmware are embedded, is embedded directly in a piece of hardware to make the hardware work as intended. Firmware is programmed by the manufacturer and is installed on a digital device right in the factory. So all computing devices have firmware. Next, we have the second type of software, which is the application software, which we are all familiar with since nagagamit natin siya araw-araw. And mas visual siya compared sa system software. So application software are third-party software needed to be downloaded, unlike system software. They perform a specific task and usually interact with the user. So, ayun nga, kaya yun ang nasabi ko kanina, mas visual siya. So, ito, mas familiar tayo dito. So, unfortunately, the application software is dependent on the system software. Here are the examples of application software. So, we have the general applications which offer a wide range of fundamental, fundamental functions. So there are numerous applications that fall under this category. Some of the commonly used application software include um, itong ay mga browsers. We have here the Google, the Google Chrome, the word processing or slide, uh, slides application, or the Windows, the Microsoft Office, and then the multi, multimedia software, which is the, here we have the icon for VLC player. Okay, next we have the business, business, the, the application software for businesses. So they fulfill specific business, business functions and operations. These applications are presumed to improve the accuracy and efficiency of operations along with boosting the productivity and profitability of a business. Some of the application software commonly used by businesses are project management applications, Database applications like MySQL and productivity software like Microsoft Teams. Like Microsoft Teams. Finally, we have the custom developed applications. They are solely built for some specific organization or software. So based uh, based then sa business requirements na provided ng nagpagawa. So that's all for the software part i would like to call on our brief or the next part thank you so much for that gwen for the next part of the presentation we will discuss the server so a server is a computer that is equipped of programs or devices that provides a service to another computer program or what we call the user or the client. Basically, it serves something different and exists to offer types of assistance, whether siyang maging physical machine, a virtual machine, or a software program. So depending on how the word server is used, there are many different ways that a server can function. One, it can receive data. Then it 
can also store data or even share the data. So, there are different types of servers and its capabilities. So, naglist ako dito ng mga common types of servers na lagi natin na encounter. So, for the first one, we have the file servers which store, manage, and retrieve files that can be accessible to other clients on the network. So, this file can be shared without physically transferring them into the client's local system. So, ang mga example na ito, if familiar kayo si sa Dropbox or sa Google Workspace. So, yun. So, for the next one, we have the print servers. So, this server has dedicated printer connected to it that can be accessed by the other clients in the network. Basically, any computer that is connected to the printer can be considered as a print server. So, a print server can also make decisions on which printer to access depending on which is closer to the client computer or which has the least amount of jobs being processed. So, mapapansin natin to sa mga computer shops, di ba? Yung mga ibang computer shops, meron silang two or more or two or more printers. So, pag yung dalawa doon may piniprint, sa mismong um, computer host is mag sa suggestion na sa pangatlong printer na natin siya i-print because yun, walang ginagawa. So, yun yung trabaho ng printer server. So, for the next slide, we have the web servers. So, a server equipped with HTTP or the hypertext transfer protocol that serves web pages in response to requests submitted by the clients. So, every website sits on a computer is known as a web server and is always connected to the internet. Yung mga examples na to is the famous Google web server, and Jinx, and the Apache web server. So for the application servers, it is a server and a computer program that runs on a server in a distributed network and handles the business logic of an application. So in simple terms, itong server na ito nagpo-provide siya ng framework to build and deploy the web applications. And from that server, nag-offer siya ng variety of services na pwede niyang gawing um, habang nag-run yung application, pwede siyang nag nagsisecure ng application, security, transactions, clustering ng mga um, performance, or even nagda-diagnose niya mismo yung app kung gagana siya. Ganon, yun yung sa application servers. So for the next slide, we have the display server. So this server lies at the base of the desktop environment. So the display server's main job is to handle low-level drawing functions, which means that it draws directly to the screen. Basically, yung display server kasi, siya yung nagbibigay ng permission sa mga application for the pixel access. It has also responsibilities in coordinating the input and the output of its clients to and from the rest of the operating systems, the hardware, and one another. So basically, yung trabaho ng display server is maging middleman between the hardware and the operating system, pati dun sa application. For example, nag-install ka ng um, messenger app sa laptop mo. So pag, syempre pag tas may install syempre bubuksan mo yan. Di ba pag bukas mo, lalabas yung logo and the login options. So, from that, yung messenger app kasi, before niya ma-display yun mismo sa computer mo, maghihingi siya ng permission sa um, display server. And that display server, maghihingi naman yung display server ng permission sa hardware and operating system mo. If kaya niya bang, if kaya ba ng laptop mo na i-display yung, yung need i-display nung app. So, ganun yung display server. So, for the last server is the sound server, which is responsible for the actual communication with the hardware or the sound card. So, to this sound server, different clients could connect and request to, the, to send sounds to the data and the sound card. So, it commonly runs as a background process. So, yung sound server kasi, siya yung nagbibigay access sa, sa, ano, sa mga apps para mahinaan or nakadepende sa sounds, siya yung nagbibigay na access sa sounds na pwedeng makuha ng apps para sa laptop mo. So, yung mga karaniwan na sound server is the pipe wire and the pulse audio. So, that is all for the server discussion. So, the last presenter of the group will be Cinderella Morales. Thank you, Aubrey. So now let's discuss things about data. 
next slide, please. And so, data is the information processed or stored by a computer. This information may in, be in the form of text documents, images, um, other clips, software programs, and etc. Data may be processed by the computer CPU and is stored in files and folders on the computer's hard disk. Next slide, please. So there are a lot of types of data, but let's discuss about the binary data. Binary data is the only type of data that can be directly understood and executed by a computer. Also, it is a type of data that is represented or displayed in the binary numeral system, which is a system that is numerically represented by a combination of zeros and ones. It allows data to be transferred from one computer to another using a network connection or various media devices. Next slide, please. Let's now talk about how data is stored. Computers represent data, including videos, images, sounds, and text, as binary values using patterns of just two numbers, one and zero. This one and zero is called the bit, which is the smallest unit of data. Tapos, since single bits are too much to be much used, since single bits are too small to be much used, they are grouped together into units of eight bits. Each eight bit unit is called a byte. Bytes are eight binary digits long. The storage and memory is measured in megabytes and gigabytes, like yung drive ng mga nasa computer. Units of data measurement continue to grow as the amount of data collected and stored grows. Example nito is yung latest multiple of byte, which is yung Bronto byte, which is a data storage that is equal to 10 raised to negative 27 power of bytes. Data can be stored in file formats like mainframe systems like index sequential access method and yung virtual storage access method. Yung index sequential access method is your method that supports sequential also direct processing of data on CKD disk devices of earlier design. So to process a file, it requires that the file's records have keys of a fixed length. So yung file access by this kind of access method needs to be reorganized from time to time to for better performance. This requires that that twice the size of the file is kept online or that a tape is used as intermediate storage. Example ito is yung databases na maintain yung customer file indexed by name, number, and yung zip code. Next access method is yung virtual storage access method. So it is a data set type and the access method used to manage various user data types. This provides much more complex functions than other disk access methods. It keeps disk records in a unique format that is not understandable by other access methods. So this access method is used primarily for applications. So today, greater specialization developed as database Database management system and then relational database technology arose to organize information. That's all for data. So that is all for the computer resources. Thank you for listening and I hope that you learned something from us.